Well, it's Tuesday, and you all know what that means. That means, once again, as you know, we get closer and closer to Stand and Deliver by NXT. The real question is how this thing is going to play out before we get there. We're only a couple of weeks away. I guess we're all excited. As you know, Trick Williams has some unfinished business with Carmelo Hayes. We're trying to determine who will be number one contender in a tag team tournament to face against Baron Corbin and Von Breakner for the NXT Tag Team titles. Roxanne Press continues to press on, try to claim what she felt that she never lost, but however, she's taking things way too far and many other cool things as well. Now, first things first, we're going to be reviewing the much recent shows from Game Changer Wrestling, GCW. Now, originally I was going to do all four of them, but due to my time limit, I was unable to do that. I ended up doing only three. The first one took place back on March 1st with Project GCW. And then, of course, the following day, they went to Keep in Touch. And then, of course, after that, on the 9th of March, we had Ashes to Ashes. So all of these events are incredible. And then, of course, we move on with some news updates to end this entire episode to tell you guys what's been happening in the world of pro wrestling, such as what events the promotions are putting out, who's booked, what matches are set. We even have, of course, um, some updates on um, WrestleCon. Apparently, certain names have been announced for that. And, of course, developments in the world of pro wrestling. And then, finally, of course, a very intriguing signing in stardom. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, TNA, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, J Rod here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we do a lot of pro wrestling reviews from various promotions, not only here in the United States, but also in Japan, Mexico, Canada, Europe, the UK. Anywhere in the world where pro wrestling is not as big, but it continues to grow. We also do discussion videos, talk about various topics such as the wrestlers themselves, the promotions, factions, storylines, whatever we want to talk about. We also do more news updates. If I'm unable to put it on this episode, I can put it on a separate video by itself. We also do real timing news updates to keep you guys on alert if something has happened in the world of pro wrestling that needs to be alerted for all of you. We also do the United Sayaka Watch and various other cool things as well. So if you like what you see, please subscribe to us. So click on that subscribe button. You'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and other cool stuff on this channel as well. But if you like this episode, please give us a like on the like button or a nice comment in the description down below. Now... All introductions have set aside. I believe it's time to get the show on the road with the very first review, and that is, of course, GCW's Project GCW. Okay. GCW. Project GCW. Now, this recently took place early this month on March 1st. Our very first match started out with Billy Starks taking on Killer Kelly. Uh, match was okay. You know, I think it was a pretty good one. You know, you probably would think, oh, Killer Kelly would be more of a crazy person, do her little smile, whatever she does. But you would think that in this particular match, that Billy Stark, who have we seen her too many times in GCW, was the bigger star in this match. And she took it like a champ, no matter what Killer Kelly did to her. And then she applied the Star Driver, and boom, just like that, she picked up her first win for this particular day. Now, our next match, we have a three-way match. Now, I haven't seen this guy before for a long time, Dante Leon. I don't know how long has it been. 
I since I seen him. I know he last I saw him, he was in in pro wrestling Noah competing for the GHC Junior Heavyweight Title. Uh, but yeah, it's great to see him. And there's this new guy named Ariel Van Go Van Gogh. I thought it was a real really dumb name, but I have to say, his skills very impressive. And then of course we have the bad boy Joey Janela. I was like, to be honest with you, is this Ariel Van Gogh is Va Van Gogh is the one person who I don't know who he is, but he was like very impressive. I mean, if you guys saw what he did, he actually hooked up on the top of this little beam or whatever and then jump on top of Janela and and Leon I'm like whoa that's crazy but match was okay I have to say I was impressed especially with Ariel Van Gogh but frankly that did not well for either of them because it was Joey who walked out to Victor with the um I think it was the package pile driver and just like that it was over now our next match we had a bit of an interesting combination we have a thrunt consistent of Sawyer Wreck, uh, Alley Catch, and Effie taking on the garbage, car, uh, the garbage wheels, uh, the uh, the garbage wheels consistent of Alec Price, uh, Cole Raderick, and of course Jack Cartwheel. Now you would think it was going to be a very fantastic match. Now we have seen, of course, Raderick and and Price. They are they have established a well established tag team. We know. I'm hoping for one day these guys win the tag team titles one day. Uh, but they still need to rack up some more wins. But with the combination of Jack Cartwheel, you know that's going to be impressive. But, however, it was Sawyer Rack who picked up the win when she did the choke um, bomb onto, who was it? Onto Raderick, and just like that, it was over. Now, our next match, we have a singles match. We have Oni and Bendito taking on the Young Goat Myron Reed. Now, you know there's going to be a lot of high flyings in this match. I wasn't too sure how this was going to end, but it was a fantastic match. I mean, Oni El Bendito, um, I have seen him countless times, not only here in the States, but also in Japan. I haven't seen footage of him down south of the border in Mexico, but he's a, an amazing wrestler. But he actually pulled off. He had. He seems like he had Myron Reed in the like a position for the razor's edge, but once he let him loose, he uh, Myron Reed landed on his knee, kind of like a knee backdrop breaker or something. I don't know what to call it, but that was brutal, and that's how he picked up the win. So I'm like, damn, he's good. He's a high flyer, but he does have like uh he's like a big more taller dude, but much flexibility, like nothing similar to what Samoa Joe does or Keith Lee. But you guys will see that. Our next match we have. Um, Alex Zane, the sauce, taking on uh, Mike Bailey. Uh, I thought it was a really good match. I mean, I'm a fan of both these guys. But as a fan, I have to remain biased because I don't know what he's going to do. Now, of course, we know Mike Bailey. We know he's fantastic. We know he can do great things. But Alex Zane, he was one of those wrestlers we definitely talk about. I mean, I felt like he reinvented himself very well since he came back and then a new look and all this and wow fantastically and he applied the taco driver onto Mike Bailey and just like that and for for what I failed to mention on this match this is more of a rematch because Alex Zane lost to Mike Bailey once before so basically in record wise they're one on one each a piece so one has to win the next one the next time these two come across each other but that time will come now, our next match, we have, of course, the wannabe death matchers, death match royalty with Broski, um, Jimmy Lloyd, Steph the Landers, and Matt Cardona. They take on Dan the Dad, KLD, and Shaza B uh, McKenzie. Now, you would think this is going to be an interesting match because, of course, I'm a fan of Dan the Dad because he's a very unique wrestler. I always say I'm always interested in unique wrestlers, and Dan the Dad is one of those guys. But unfortunately, this match ended when, of course, um, um, what's his name? Cardona applied the radio silence on Dan and Dad to pick up the win. But during the post match, he was about to, they were about to force Dan and Dad to kiss Matt Cardona's ass. But thank God for Keldy and Shazam uh, McKenzie to save the day. But of course, Sawyer Wreck, who has some unfinished business towards Stephen Landers, took matters in their own hands. But unfortunately, Cardona. 
suffered the, the fate because he may have won the match. But however, Dan the Dad, Kelly Lee and Jada McKenzie gets the last laugh when they put shoved Matt Cardona in Kelly Lee's ass. So that's right. Yep, he sh they shoved his head right up his ass. So that what he deserves. He may have won the match, but however, <laughs> Dan the Dad, uh, McKenzie and Kelly Lee gets the last laugh. Now, our next match, this is one of two championship matches. We have the JCW World Title. That is the Jersey Championship Wrestling Title. Uh, we have Eric Cannon. Um, she, he faces off against Masha Slamovich. I have to say, what a brutal match. I mean, the thing is this. You know that Masha will not back down from a fight, especially if she's facing a much bigger opponent. But you know that she will try to pick up a win by applying a uh, the uh, chokehold. So far, she has won by using that every single time. But it did not work in this favor for her against Eric Cannon. But she was able to apply the smash pack uh, package pile driver. And just like that, she retained the belt. Now, our next match we have is the JC GCW World title. We have, um, what's his name? John Wayne Murdoch taking on Blake Christian. Now, many fans... We're hoping, just hoping, that the Duke of Hardcore will beat the living bejesus out of Blake Christian. Now, you know that would have been the possibilities. But, however, um, uh, Reed Bentley took out, of course, um, Blake Christian's muscle and bodyguard, Shane Ma Mercer, who would do whatever it takes to ensure this match ends in Blake Christian's favor. Uh, but, however... Um, it did not work in his sphere because for some odd reason, uh, John Wayne Murdoch took way too much time trying to envision what he was going to do with uh, Blake Christian with the tubes. But unfortunately, that was his own doing when Blake Christian stomped him right on top of the tubes. And that's it. He retained the belt. But however, um, I'm sure that sooner or later, he will have to lose the belt. Now, our next match, we have a very interesting tag team match. We have, of course... Los Macizos, um, Ciclope and Medio Extremo taking on Maki Def Kill, Maki Ito, and Nick Gage. I have to say, what a match. I mean, I was like very impressed by this match by any means necessary because, I mean, I don't know how Maki Ito will deal with guys like Los Macizos. Those guys are always up for a fight, always willing to bring out all the plunder underneath the table. But, uh, it was, of course, um, a pile driver through the door b by Nick Gage uh, onto Ciclopse to pick up the win. And, of course, during post-match, um, Nick Gage put out a very fantastic promo talking about how Los Macizos are one of the, the best tag teams in GCW, that they have a lot of he has a lot of respect for them. But he also said that he and Maki Ito are now making a play for the tag team titles. So they have to rack up some wins. So sooner or later, they have to want they have will deal with, of course, violence is forever. But right now, they need more wins. So that's pretty much what happened. Now, our next match, as you know, we have Mance Warner versus One Commanders, former brothers from the same faction. Um, it's now been confirmed that. Second gear crew in GCW are officially done. It's done thanks to Mance Warner. Now, you know that this match was going to be a brutal, devastating blow, of course, that Mance Warner will stop at nothing because he wants to be GCW champion. He feels that guys and fa like friends and family have held him back, and, it and he wants to eradicate that in order to fulfill what he f has desired. But, of course, as any other match, the referee was out. And then, of course, the low blow by Mance Warner, then the screwdriver, and then knee strike. Mance Warner wins the match. So, yeah. So, that's this is not the end of what Mance Warner is doing. We do know he will face Dark Sheik in next one. But right now, let's get to that right now for, uh, I believe, that is Keep in Touch. Okay, as we continue with more with GCW, we have, of course, Keep in Touch. This took place recently as well, earlier this month, 
on March 2nd. Now, before they begin with anything, they opened up the show to pay respects to Virgil. Um, you may remember him. He was um, a WWE legend. We've seen him in WWE back then. He was a guy who normally used to hang out with the big, with the million dollar man. Uh, it, I thought it was a nice ceremony to do things like that. I, I think he might have, I think Virgil did appear in GCW before, but I cannot remember. But um, yeah, so nice opening ceremony in memory of Virgil. Now, our opening match opened up with the GCW World Tag Team titles defended. Violence Forever take on the Garbage Daddies. Now, these guys are one of those guys that I always say they should definitely become tag team champions. And you know they're going to bring out the fight no matter what they do. I mean, they have a hell of a combination they could do. But however, when it comes to Violence Forever, they're beyond a different level that you wouldn't imagine. But they were able to outcome, out, overcome that by applying their vicious combo, a kind of like a brain buster in Sagari. Onto um, onto Radrick, and just like that, they retain the belts. Next match, we have Braden Lee versus Joshua Bishop. Um, wasn't too much pump with this match. I mean, I know these guys are, but however, uh, this match ended, of course, with ba Joshua Bishop with the power bomb. No surprise for me there. But yes, so that's how that ended. Next match, we have Jack Cartwheel versus the Young Goat. Minor read. I thought it was impressive. I was like, damn. I mean, Jack Carwell, we know he's impressive all the time with his little cartwheels and stuff. But when it comes to Minor Reed, he's that's the reason why he calls him, they call him the young goat. But he was able to apply Captain Crunch, and just like that, they he picked up the W. Now, our next match, we have Billy Starks versus Billy Rock. Uh I'm not sure. I think he's like a mentor to Billy Starks. But I have to say it was a very impressive match. I mean, Billy Rock wasn't holding back no matter what. But however, Billy was overcoming whatever decisions happened. But somehow, this guy was able to kick out during the swan After, uh, what's his name? Billy Starks applied the swan tom and didn't work. So she tried to her last resort. Now, we have witnessed do a submission in ROH and she applied it and just like that it was over Billy Starks picked up the win now our next match we have a very interesting uh, trios match we have Oni and Bendito he teams up with Los Macizos they take on Young Dragons consistent of Trip, um, Cassidy, Ace Perry and Josh Crane I thought this match was great but I want to put this on record I like the theme that Young Dragons co come out I thought it was real catchy I mean uh, I'm a big heavy metal dude, dude. I just loved it. Uh, but the match was impressive, I have to say. I mean, if GCW had their own trios belts, this would have been great to see. But in this match, it was a <coughs> um, a destroyer by uh, Cyclops and on to, uh, to Perry. And just like that, they picked up a fantastic win. Next match, we have Calvin Tankman versus Alex Zane. Now... I think these two have come across each other before. I just cannot remember if they have at all. But it was a fantastic match. I mean, look, Alex Zane, amazing wrestlers. Um, Tank, uh, Tank Man, very impressive. I mean, the dude is a fighter. That's what I can say about him. But he was able to pick up the win when, of course, Alex Zane ended up on the wrong. When he was trying to do a maneuver, he, he put himself in the position where, of course, Tank Man was able to apply the Tankman driver, and just like that, it was over. Now our next match, we have the GCW World title. Eric Cannon, the challenger, takes on that stupid little moron, uh, Blake Christian. Now you would think that Blake Christian will do whatever it takes to retain the belt. That's exactly what he's been doing since he became GCW. He does not want to lose it because he thinks he is the best. But you would think otherwise, but Mercer... Try to get in the way, but uh, Blake Christian accidentally misfired. But however, nothing in um in um will stop Blake Christian no matter what he did. So he rolled up uh, Eric Cannon and then used his the ropes in his advantage to ensure ref didn't see it, and just like that, it was over. So sooner or later, Blake Christian will have to lose that belt. Our next match we have the Regis, consistent of my um. 
John Wayne Murdoch and Reed Bentley taking on Maki Death Kill. I thought this match was crazy. Now, of course, they were going to isolate Nick Gage away from Maki Ito because they think Maki Ito, very small, doesn't have the necessary power, but Nick Gage knows don't count her out yet. That was their mistake. They just picked on little Maki Ito thinking it's over. But don't underestimate her at all. Because that's who she is. And that's the reason she and Nick Gage have been able to coexist together. And Nick Gage allowed her to pick up the win when she applied a DDT on John Wayne Murdoch. And just like that, they won. So it's only a matter of time until Maki Death Kill makes their way to uh, for the titles for G the GCW World Tag Team titles. Now our next match now... Apparently, Mance Warner believes that celebrating Nate Webb's uh, 20-year anniversary is a load of horse crap. And just like that, he tried to ruin everybody's parade to celebrate Nate, Wade, Nate Webb's um, a, um, you know, anniversary. But of course, like any other type in the match, you would think. Now, of course, um, Mance did everything in his power to stop him. Even when the ref was out, he thought it could... Give him the advantage. It did not. But unfortunately, just like what we saw in, in in like Blake Christian, he uses the ropes in his advantage. And just like that, uh, he just won. Just like that. So, yeah. So, that's pretty much it for happened for this one for Keep It Touch. Let's do our last one for GCW, which is uh, Ashes to Ashes. Okay, Ashes to Ashes. Uh, this is from GCW. This took place recently on the 9th of March. Now, for the record, this is one of four that I haven't seen yet. That Four that I decided to do. Now, the fourth one, I'll do that at another time before I catch up with the rest. But right now, let's get started with this one. We opened up with a scramble match that has GCW, uh, the GCW Extreme title. Joey Janela defends his belt against uh, five others. Maki Ito, um, Broski Jimmy Lloyd, Matthew, uh, no, Marcus Mathers, Alex Zane, and Jad Cartwheel. And I, you probably know, these scramble matches, anything could happen. Very predictable. But I think the obvious question is this. Who is going to walk out? Now, we know, I know for a fact with Jimmy, with Jimmy, he will love nothing more to win that belt in order to bring honor to the to the uh, so-called deathmatch royalty, which of course they are deathmatch wannabes. Uh, I know Alex Zane would definitely deserve because he's a fantastic wrestler, uh, but I did not expect this one: Maki Ito winning the the DDT the the GCW Extreme Title when she applied a DDT onto Marcus Mathers. Now, I want to make a note on this match with this title being dropped. We know Joey Janela has issued a, uh, a play for the GCW title. Does this mean that it's a possibility that he could win that belt bef by the, before, uh, like in months coming by? I don't know. If it is, then it would make sense why he had to drop it. If they have any plans of having him become GCW World Title, I say... That's it's coming to a fruition, but we just will see see about that. <coughs> Our next match is also another title match. We have the GCW Tag Team Titles, Defendant Violence is Forever, Kevin Koo and Dominic Greeny. They take on Cunt, consistent of Sawyer Wreck, and of course Dark Sheik. Uh, you know the these ladies are violent. You know that they're capable of trying to break shit in, into pieces. But when it comes to violence forever, they are intending to t waste no time and to ensure these belts don't go anywhere. And that's exactly what happened because there was another combination of Brain Buster and Sigari onto Sawyer Wreck. But this time it was through the door. And just like that, violence forever retained the belts. Now, as we saw the previous review with um, these guys, Masisos, once again, they... Um, team up with 
Oni El Bendito. They take on Terry Yaki, uh, Mr. Danger, and Hunter Drake. Now, these guys, oh my god, they uh, Macizos and Oni and Benito put a world of hurt against their opponents in every way possible. Not to mention, uh, Hunter Drake was tossed over the ring through a door and just taken out. But that gave, of course, the opportunity for Oni and Benito to apply the shooting star press onto Teriyaki. And just like that, Oni and his buddies, uh, Los Macizos, win the match. Now, this match, this next one, I have to say, one of my absolute favorites. We have that piece of garbage, Charles Mason, along with his big, dumb brute. Pero, he takes on against, he's very nice and very evil, but, however, he was very evil for this particular Danhausen. And, you know, Danhausen, I have to say, the smartest man in the room. He took out Pero with some sort of object in his face. And he was out. So he was smart enough to take out Pero. But of course, Mason did everything in his power to try to break him in half. Not to mention, he, this was a much darker side of Danhausen i never seen before. No, nobody did. But, however, Danhausen was able to overcome whatever he tried to do to him. He couldn't even put him away no matter what. But Charles Mason is trying to prove a point. None of his points, like guys like Danhausen, panned out. He even tried to put, he put teeth in his mouth, but Mason got those teeth back in his mouth. Uh, Danhausen spit those teeth back in his mouth and then super kicked, and then, of course, go to sleep. And that's exactly what happened. Danhausen won the match, but poor little Charles Mason walked away like he's in disbelief. Yeah, of course. Of course, it's what I love to see. Charles Mason, he thinks that he is politically correct, but this time he was wrong. So, <laughs> screw that for uh, for Charles Mason. <laughs> now, our next match, we have John Wayne Murdoch taking on Brandon Kirk. Now, I haven't seen Brandon Kirk for a long time, or his wife. I don't know what in the world those, those two were doing, but back in the day, they were the most hated couple ever. But, man, it was interesting to see them. But I have to say, Brandon Kirk really, really was amazing. He was able to withstand whatever the Duke of Hardcore tried to throw at him. And once it was over, it was with the pile driver, and just like that, John Wayne Murdoch uh, first showed some respect to Brandon Kirk. Then he low blowed him out of nowhere once he won the match. And then after that, he told him that he's going to beat the crap out of him and his wife. Um, well, you mentioned his wife. Well, she's not going to take that kindly. She showed up to give him an ass whooping. But, of course, John Wayne Murdoch ran away with his tails between his legs. So, yeah. Now, our next match, we have... Microman. Yep, Microman. He takes on the biggest a hole on the planet, Tony Deppin. Yeah, of course, Tony Deppin, an a hole. I'm sure he's probably laughing his butt off, saying, <laughs> "I got a piece of little short dude." Uh, don't underestimate Microman. That's the last thing people need. Don't underestimate Microman because he's Microman. Yep, you would think. That little short dude beat the crap out of, of course, Tony Deppin with the splash, just like that. I'm sure he's in the back. He went to the locker room, kicking and screaming. How did I lose to a shorty? Well, everybody loses to him. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but yes, that's how it rolled up from until yeah. Now our next match, we have the Garbage Daddies taking on Shane Mercer and of course Blake Christian. Now. You would think the Garbage Daddies, who have more experience as a tag team, would have been the deciding factor of this match. But, unfortunately, no. For some odd reason, somehow, Mercer and Blake Christian were able to coexist very well. And, unfortunately, uh, Blake Christian applied the 450 splash onto Alec Price, and just like that, it was over. Now, our next match, this is an Atlantic, strap match, Atlantic City strap match, Effie versus Mance Warner. Man, this match was a brutal, bloody torture match, not to mention, of course, um, 
we did see uh, what Mansour was determined to do. He even pulled out a screwdriver in, in, while the ref was out. Tried to stop him, but he used that on Effie. But what happened is this. Mance Warner saying that his fr friends and family, they're the things that hold him back. Well, this time he was effing wrong because Alley Catch, Dark Sheik, Cold Radrick, Alec Price, they all showed up in the side of Effie. And they actually gave each of them a, a shot. Uh, a shot. Mance Warner, he was already out until... Effie applied to Zack Ryder, and just like that, he wins the match. And then, of course, he gave a very strong, powerful promo talking about the people around him. And he also said he swore that he will make sure that he never becomes GCW World Champion. And, of course, Mance Warner, who has the golden ticket, he will cash it in. But the real question is, will he fulfill? Well, I don't know, but we will see. Now our next two matches are death matches. These uh, we did were told that two uh, amazing wrestlers from Japan will be coming their way. Abdullah um, Kobayashi he takes on Matt Tremont. You know this is gonna be a brutal match. I mean these guys will use all kinds of plunder. But however, it was Abdullah with the fan tubes that became the deciding factor on Matt Tremont, and then applied a big elbow. And just like that, he won the match. So that's the reason Abdullah Kobayashi, he is legendary. But however, his buddy, Ruch, uh, Ruchi Ito, will take on Nick Gage. Now, you know Nick Gage, he loves a bloody fight. You know the kind of person he is. But the real question is this, will another Japanese wrestler walk away with the victory? Well, unfortunately, that did not happen because Nick Gage picked up the win when he applied a power dryer right through the glass. And it was over right from there. I thought these two matches were great because, you know, I am familiar as, with these two guys. But, yes, uh, we'll see what happens in the future with these guys. But right now, I think we're done with all of our GCW reviews. I believe it's time for the one that I think many of you are expecting, NXT. Okay, NXT. Opened up with Roxanne Perez. Apparently, Tatum Paxley wanted payback for what Roxanne Perez did a couple of weeks ago to Lyra Vakira. Now, we know she's been unhinged. Now, you would think this match will fall in favor for Roxanne Perez. Well, it kind of did. She put in a crossface. But, however, once the match was over, she jumped in into a promo saying that, the tr that she demands the NXT women's title because she, and by default, never lost it. But however, we all know she's been approaching it the wrong way. Then we thought Lyra Vakiria, who we haven't seen since a couple of weeks ago, just reappeared trying to get a little payback of herself for what Roxanne did to her back then. But apparently things got a little more complicated. So it's been going back and forth, back and forth between them. Later on, we did see, of course, Lyra have a little discussion with the GM, Ava, asking for this match between her and Roxanne at Stand and Deliver. And later it was, of course, determined it was going to happen. It's going to happen. So Roxanne Perez will be getting a shot of the NXT women's title. Now, as you know what happened last week, well, metaphor after Noam Dar embarrassing lost to Trick Williams, but uh it seems that one person hasn't forgotten about the kiss, and that is of course Last Legend, uh, I think she's having the little, you know, whatever syndrome. You know, she can't shake that thing off with Trick. But all of a sudden, a peer faces from their past reappeared. And I'm talking about Alpha Academy. But apparently that, of course, Otis, who you guys remember, had a little thing for her, just started to become jelly about it. So basically, he's... Can't believe that Last Legend's having the little <clears throat> butterflies towards Trick Williams. But however... Alpha County more not there to deal with that, but we will further more with metaphor. But however, what is Alpha Academy is doing in NXT? Well, that is a good question because, as you know, the NXT Tag Team Division has been hot recently. As you know, we have Braun Breaker and um, what's his name? I have Braun, no, Braun Breaker, yeah, and Baron Corbin, our current NXT Tag Team Champions, have been red hot recently. However, 
Alpha Academy were asking, why did no one invited them to this whole tag team thing? Well, that's a very good honesty question. But instead, they decided to approach the tag team champions saying, look, we're not asking you guys to give us tag team championship opportunity. We want to earn it. So saying, how about this? We face you guys this coming Tuesday. If we win, we'll challenge you at Stand and Deliver. So basically, it was like, okay, why not? So that is going to happen. So if they win, they will go to Stand and Deliver, which is kind of interesting to see. Now, moving on. Last week, we saw Brooks Jensen got himself manhandled by the current North American champion, Oba Femi. However, Josh Briggs, as you know, has been unhinged after what happened. Now, you can say that it's Josh Briggs' fault for telling Brooks Jensen to grow some balls. However, it seems that Oba Femi is trying to, how do I say, not correct them, but try to remind them of what he did and, of course, what he did to Brooks. However, it seems that we had Dijek, who had his sights set on the North American title, calling Obafemi that he is not the rightful owner. But, of course, we're going to see a matter involving the North American title. So we will see where that leads us from here on out. But, however, while that was happening, the, uh, Sean Spears was watching this in the dressing room. We don't know what he who he was looking at. Was he looking at Obafemi? Was he looking at Dijak? Was he looking at, of course, um, Brooks Jens, uh, Josh Briggs? I don't know. So it seems like he was excited for what he was looking. But all of a sudden when he left, we saw a creepy little dude just lurking around. And I'm talking about Joe Gazy. I don't know what in the world he was doing, but kind of creepy. But yeah. Now, our next match is involving the tag team qualifying match. We have Nathan Frazier and Axiom taking up the guys from No Quarter Catch Crew, or should I say No Quarter Morons, if I like to call them. The ones who step up to the game is Charlie Dempsey and Miles Bourne. Now, you would think that No Quarter's catch crew would try to figure out a way to, how do I say, slide their way in to ensure they win this match. Well, they kind of almost did. But, however, it was a combination of Spanish Fly and Frog, I mean, no, Spanish Fly and Phoenix Splash by both Axiom and Nathan Frazier that allowed them to advance. So, that's pretty in intense. So they tried that on to Miles Bourne. It was Nathan Frazier who picked up the pinfall. One, two, three. It's over. Now, we did see a little uh, very interesting development. NXT Anonymous struck again. Caught the disagreement over what happened last week with, of course, Von Wagner and Mr. Stone. Now, things have... Seems like I don't know how their friendship would is, but... It appears that uh, Mr. Stone was not happy how Von Wagner was not there for him. But, of course, Von Wagner in, tried to reason with him, saying that, hey, you told me not to, but, yeah. So we'll see where that leads us from there and on, but why not? Now, our next match, we have So Ruka, as you know, made her return. Uh, she takes on too much energy, Brinley Reese. Now, you would think that this was going to be a very good introduction. Now, we know... So Ruka had recently met her, and she told uh, Carmen Petrovic, that girl has too much energy. And she, boy, she's not wrong. But you would think that this was a perfect opportunity for a comeback, which she did. She even applied the Soul Snatcher and picked up the win. However, um, Davenport, who you guys know, was the one who put her out of action last year, just reared her ugly face and just attacked her out of nowhere. I wouldn't be so sure. I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see a feud between those two. Now, Gigi Dolan, as you know, is not happy with the result of what happened last week with Ariana Grace. Ariana Grace, who who thinks that, oh, they don't need to fight. They just need to find their inner beauty. That whole crap. But Gigi Dolan tried to tell her to stay out in people's business about how they feel. Apparently, we saw Ariana Grace load, blow, uh, Gigi, and Gigi did the same thing, but except that Gigi, out of dumb luck, got caught with the with her hand in the cookie jar. And apparently, Ariana Grace is looking for a makeover. I, I just hope Gigi just attack her. That's what I would think. But we'll see. 
Now, we did see the arrival of the D'Angelo family. They just arrived, and of course, Tony D'Angelo just got up straight up to business. As you know, he'll be facing Ilya Dragunov at Stand and Deliver for the NXT title. So, anything could go right, uh, go well for him from here on out. But however, Ilya Dragunov is still a little bit not pissed, but more like, what the hell, man? What, why did you did what you did last week? We just, I just wanted to talk. He wasn't trying to start anything but we'll see how things rolls up between both sides now uh during an interview no, well i already saw no, we already saw that anyway uh we did see of course thea talk to riley osborne about everything else that happened but however riley osborne has to get himself ready because he it was set to face he is set to face to someone in the no quarter, uh, no quarter catch crew with their little claws for the NXT Heritage Cup. And the person to step up the game is, of course, that weasel with the bad attitude, Drew Gulak. So, but the surprising was Osborne took the first round with the shooting star press. And then, of course, the uh, dumb Drew Gulak decided to sheep shot him. Just no, no, that was the second round. My bad. Then the second round went to Gulak and then he sheep shot him for no apparent reason. However, in the fourth round, things would have gone well, but if it wasn't for the sudden appearance of both Jasmine, Nix, and, of course, Jay-Z Jane for costing them that whole thing. So, basically, the match went to Drew Gulak in that capacity. Now, we do see what happens outside. Brooks Jensen is not happy how things turned out for the best for him. Uh, Fallon Henley tried to reason with him, but he wasn't having it. However... Uh, Fallon Henley decided to help out someone who has been dealing with someone from Fall uh, Fallon's past. We're talking about Kiana James and Izzy Dame. So basically, Jordan, uh, Jordan uh, Kalani Jordan has an ally. So we'll get to that in a bit. Now, our qualifying match we have for the tag teams we have the OC taking on Hank Walker and Tank Ledger. Now. Of course, we were going to see the OCs. They seemed like they were the fan favorites on this one. But it was the Magic Killer that sealed the deal for the OCs. They did that on Ledger, and that kind of ended. Now, later on, we did see outside where, of course, Jay-Z Jane and Jasmine have a little chit-chat with, of course, the uh, with Izzy and Kiana about Thea. Well, as soon as Jay-Z Jane and uh, Jasmine Nix left, uh, both Izzy and Kiana were attacked by Jordan, Kalani Jordan, and of course Fallon Henley. So it things got out of hand. Now, Ava Reigns was in her office do, discussing business for the upcoming Stand and Deliver. Thea Hill says she wants Jay Z Jane for what she cost, and of course that match was granted. However, Ava Reigns also had a talk with Duke Cutson, who was there with Thea, telling her. That they were going to have like a somewhat of a number one contendership for the North American title. So basically, Duke Hudson is like, hmm, I like the sound of that. So he took up to the opportunity. Now, our next match, we saw Noam Dar versus Trick Williams. Now, this is a bit of a payback for what happened. As you know, Noam Dar, who, as you know, lost the Heritage Cup to no quarter, no quarter Catch Crew, is trying to bounce back, and he decided to do that at the expense of Trick Williams. And you would have thought that th there was going to be another moment where we're going to see Lash Legend and uh, Trick get involved. And, well, that almost uh, happened, but unfortunately it failed when, of course, the Trick shot, or should I say the knee strike, onto Noam Dar set the deal however we did see the security of carmelo hayes made their presence known but it turns out it was nothing but a trap by carmelo Hayes dressed up as a security guard then attacked them so of course carmelo hayes is determined to wipe them out to send them packing we will see what happens when that day comes so at this moment we'll see where it leads us so for right now i think we'll just leave things as it is and, of course, end things with all of our reviews. Now, let's move on with our last and final thing, news updates. Oh. 
Okay, so welcome to our news updates. So let's begin with, of course, updates with the promotions for their upcoming events. Now, let's begin with mostly we have with GCW. As you know, this coming weekend, we have Role Model in Detroit. They announced that the Garbage Daddies, consistent of Alec Price and Cole Radrick, they will be in action to take on a guys I never heard of called the Pillars. Now, if any of my subscribers... In the general vicinity of Detroit or surrounding areas of Michigan. If you guys know who the pillars are, please give me a comment down below. I'd like to know who they are. Now, as you know, we have the Joey Janela Spring Break taking place in Philly, mostly on April 5th. It was announced that Matt Cardona will take on Blue Kane. So that's going to be very interesting to, you know, hear about. So I'm excited for it. Now, as you know, I did announce for the coming event by uh, GCW, Tournament Survival 9. That will take place on June 1st. As you know, if you guys are unfamiliarized with this tournament, this is more of a deathmatch tournament. And they pick out wrestlers. And the person who they announced for this one, uh, the first entrant is the deathmatch, uh, the, uh, Big Japan deathmatch champion, Yuki Ishikawa. So he is the number one entrance. I'm pretty sure we know that there will be more names that will be announced before we get to June. So stand by for that. Now, as you know, by the end of the month, we have War Chambers on Mar March 29th by MLW. They announced that, um, of course, Star Jr. will part uh, participate in th that event. So we'll see how that is. Now, uh, very interesting development. As you know, Stardom will be here in the states uh down in philly in the during the wrestlemania week now there were certain names that may or may have been announced for the upcoming uh, event um they haven't decided who they were until it, it was finally revealed and let me pull that up for you guys now okay now here's gonna who's gonna participate on april 4th of this year in philadelphia for stardom american dream 2024 we have saki kashima Tam Nakano, uh, Saya Kamitani, Micah, Mei Sita, Konami, Saki, yes, uh, Ram Kaicho, our newly crowned New Japan Strong Women's Champion, Stephanie Vakir, Mariah May, Willow Nightingale, and Zaya Brookside. So they will be participating in 2024. I'm not sure if more names will be announced, but we will see until then. Now, uh, as you know, we have the upcoming Bakagaijin and Friends event, Volume 13, that will take place on April 9th. Uh, they have already announced upcoming mat the upcoming event with what matches will be taking place. Our first one we have is a three-way match. We have Munatatsu Nakamura versus Balinaki versus Gaia Hawks. And then, of course, we have Antonio Honda taking on Maya Yuhiki. So that's going to be fun to watch. I hope Mayuki knows what she's doing with Antonio Honda. Then we have Chris Brooks taking on Miyuki Takase. And then we have a very interesting special type of match. Tyrannosaurus Ino versus Tagaki Chanchirobo. <laughs> what a weird name. But yes, yeah, so that's going to be part of that. And then finally, we do have, of course, um, the J JCW, Jersey Championship Wrestling Upcoming Event. By the end of April with silent strong uh, no strong silent type. Now they haven't announced who will participate, but I'm sure we'll get to there at some point. Now interesting signings have been announced. I and mean, this one is coming from Shupro talking about Saudi Noi. And it, apparently it was revealed by Saudi Noi that she signed a, an exclusive contract with Stardom for one year. So basically she will be working with Stardom for one year, but she will be um, working with other promotions under her own, um, under a very uh, special circumstances. As you know, she works with a lot of promotions, like, of course, Sendai. Uh, we've seen her with Oz Academy. I'm sure she primarily will work with Oz Academy. She, we've seen her on that, but not much information. But yes, it's great to hear that she'll be working with Stardom more often since she is the current uh, Wonder of Stardom champion. Uh, still unclear how long she'll have it. We do know we have the Cinderella tournament taking place, but we'll see. Now, for the WrestleCon event, so any of my subscribers may plan to go to Philadelphia, or if you're planning to attend um, WrestleCon, they just announced four more names for this particular event. We have Gary Wolf, 
Samu, Tatanka, and then finally, Hala Hala player. That's right, Teddy Long will be there. So that's very exciting news. Now, interesting developments have taken place, and this one was reported by PW Insider. Uh, it was it's been announced that the Motor City Machine Guns will be free agents from TNA by the end of this month. Now, it's, some of the details have not been specific on why they're leaving. We know that TNA is back. Uh, Motor City Machine Guns have a great affiliated history with the promotion, but it's still unclear why. I mean, I just don't know. It's made no sense to me. But hopefully one day we can find out. Now, uh, Undertaker was recently in a podcast called Six Feet Under. Uh, he said something very interesting. Uh, that he... Uh, like, why did the match between him and Sting never happen? Well, it appears that he said that Vince didn't want it. He didn't want this match to happen. I mean, I could believe that because here's the thing. Vince is the kind of person who doesn't believe that this match will sell or people will not be invested because he thinks that he knows what how uh, what a good match would be. I mean, it is a sad shame that we will never have that match. I mean, it should have happened a long time ago, but it never did. But what do you guys think? Leave a comment about that. Now, uh, Dave Meltzer recently talked about a specific person, and that is, of course, Tony Khan, who's upset with Jack Perry. Now, he, as you know, Jack Perry made his appearances in New Japan, and this is what he had to say. And I think it, he, it, it's like, I don't know, like the subject will never end. He... uh. He's not fired. He's not being fired. He's absolutely not being fired. But they are not using him. Essentially, Tony's really mad at him because it cost him CM Punk. And he's getting the blame. He probably should have been suspended for a month or two. We're at seven months now. Seven months. It's ridiculous. The, pun the punishment doesn't fit the crime at this point. Now, let me ask you guys think. I mean, do you think Tony Khan had every right to be angry at Jack Perry for what he did? I mean, look, the answer is yes. The answer is no at the same time. I mean, look, whatever happened, this thing should have been resolved nicely. If I had to say maybe Dave Meltzer does have a good valid point. This should have been he should have been already been off the suspension after a month or two. But yet we're still seven months. So we'll see where that leads. Now, a very interesting development has coming into the Rhodes family. If you guys know this, uh, Dustin Rhodes has a wrestling academy in Austin, Texas called Rhodes Wrestling Academy. Now, recently he announced for the commencement of a of a tag team uh, titles, the uh, RWA tag team titles, and he just revealed that his nephews, uh, Wyatt and Wayne, um, Rhodes will be making their debut on March 24th and they are now dubbed as the Texas Outlaws um, hopefully I like to see what they um, of course if they can live up to the family name however if you if you want to know this mat, this event will take place on YouTube so if you guys are interested in checking this out uh, go on YouTube uh, Rhodes Wrestling Academy um, this is a showcase event that will be happening on the 24th of March. Uh, hopefully I can see it and I'll give you guys my honest thought about that. Um, I think that's pretty much it right now with our news update. So let's call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode coming up. As you know, we have Dynamite taking place. We have Kaguchika Okada will be challenging for the Continental title. Uh, we have also the TNT title defended in a no in an I quit match. We have various other matches as well. But however, we do have the New Japan Cup. This is the epic conclusion on who will walk out as this year's New Japan um, winner. Will it be Yoda Suji or will it be Hiku, uh, Hiroki Goto? Well, I don't know. And I'm excited. Now, I'm not 100% sure if I will be watching Stardom. As you know, they'll have their conclusion with the Cinderella Tournament. So we have two Japanese promotions that will be epi ending their conclusions for the respective tournament. So I'm looking forward to that. So uh, we'll see how that rolls up. But for right now, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So 
Goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang.